What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the most genuine gaming food vlogging channel on YouTube. I said because I can back it up. Eating me a nice little piece of barbecue chicken right here. Got half of a fruit smoothie left. Normally, I would have orange juice. You guys know my get down. But unfortunately, I you know didn't go to the store, so I had to just whip up a fruit smoothie without the orange juice. Sad. All I use is frozen fruit and, and orange juice when I make my smoothie. I don't do all that filler with ice and yogurt and all. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The fruit and the orange juice. It's it. Now, <laughs> Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, now, this video actually is going to be a follow-up to a video that I did earlier this month asking, have fighting games become too beginner-friendly? And I'm going to link that at the in the video description, but I'm going to also put it at the end of the video so you guys can just click and go straight to the video so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now, of course you guys understand my living situation, my living circumstance. You know, I live with a bunch of noisy people, bringing the kids over and all that other nonsense and, you know, the kids being loud, people singing in the house, people talking loud as hell. And I'm just like, you know what, I, I would like to have done the, the, the video with like the fancy edits and all that that I said that I was going to emphasize more on this year. But because of that, I'd rather do it like this and you guys can just hear me and maybe some cars driving in the background, you know, on the street right here because we all like a main street right there. But at least you don't have to hear all of that. Some of you hear it during my, my my live stream, some of my gaming commentary to the point where I gotta mute my microphone. I don't want to get that caught in this video. You know, I already got to deal with all that plus nosy people anytime I'm recording. How many times have you seen me do these videos and people constantly coming up to me telling me, "Oh, hey, what you doing? What you just throwing me off?" And it's just it's annoying. But despite that, I'm good chicken, by the way. We got to talk about this. Is Dragon Ball Fighters a scrub mode video game? And to come to the conclusion on whether or not it's a scrub mode video game, and also talk about some things I like about the video game, but we got to start about start off with the things that I don't like. Now, this is something that's, again, this is a follow-up to the video that I made earlier this month asking our, video, our fighting games becoming too beginner-friendly. Meaning, are they not? Are, are these games not emphasizing enough on being competitive fighters as much as they are trying to pull in the average Joe Schmo who never thought about playing a fighting game before? And again, we're still talking about the common sense. Just like in the last video, we're talking about the common sense of video of uh, of business versus the common sense of competition. And for the sake of business, they're trying to pull in more people that was a part of a gaming demographic that they never thought to touch. And I think by them doing that, they kind of just, they, how can I put it? By them doing that, they kind of distance themselves a little bit from the competitive crowd, which actually adds extra life to a video game. Because without that competitive scene, a lot of these games would be dead already. Let's just be honest here. Like, it wouldn't be any reason to support them. It wouldn't be any reason to do patches. It wouldn't be any reason to, you know, change metas or anything like that, because without competition, these games are dead, you know? And these days, if your fighting game isn't on the road to making it to Evo or anything like that, then you pretty much made a dead fighting game. And we're going to talk about um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, because this is that me talking about Dragon Ball Fighters is actually going to tie into the, something I'm going to speak, I'm going to touch on about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, as well as other games. Now... A scrub mode video game is, you know, since I'm the only person who seemed like they came up with the concept, I mean, I don't know if anybody else said it, and I don't know if anybody else got the definition. To my knowledge, I'm the only person. So, I, un until somebody can challenge me on it, my definition is the definition. A scrub mode video game is a video game made for people who don't play fighting games, so they put these easy mode one button mash combos into the game. And yeah, of course, there's other mechanics in it that are more advanced, but just the fact that we have that in the game makes it a scrub mode video game. Now, of course, you don't have to use it, but it's just a question of why is that an option, period? You know, when we look back on fighting games, you know, back when they first started back in the 90s, um, and even before that, I mean, well, actually, fighting games didn't get to be too technical until the 90s. Because uh, nobody was doing, you know, any fighting game tournaments with, 
you know, only Atari 2600, like with Activision Boxing. Nobody wasn't doing that back then. I played that game, by the way. And that's my claim to fame. That's how long I've been playing fight. I've been playing fighting games for as long as I've been playing video games as a whole. And that's for going on a good 25 to like 26 years. You know? Like, I was beating video games at the age of three, but that's not a, important. But, um, but yeah, I, uh, Back in the 90s, when you look at the way video games were made back then, it was made with the intentions of, you know, it's going to take you a while to learn this. And that's just by default with any game, but more so with fighting games than any other. Because you have to figure out which character fits your playstyle. You have to, you know, get familiar with the character's um, moveset. You have to get familiar with the matchups. You know, there's different avenues with fighting games that other games don't bring to the table even with first person shooters I, I know it has a competitive scene but fighting games to me are more complex than you just uh, shooting away at a target uh, be it moving or just standing still yeah the car's coming by I told you but um you might hear a bell in the background too that's like a little um uh, there's actually like an elementary school up the street, so this is like a good prime location that I'm living in. It's nice, but um, but yeah, fighting games have more of a depth to them than any other game because you have to learn so much about what you're going up against, as well as the character that you're using, and then you have to get used to a certain playstyle. Then you have to learn the mechanics of the game because no two fighting games really play the same, you know. And what's funny is that I can try to explain it to you, but unless you pick up the fighting game yourself, you're not going to understand what I mean. Because, um, like, when a lot of these fighting games, like, the input timings are different. Uh, the response times are different. Like, you have to be more accurate in, some, in certain games, uh, like, with your button presses. And really, without that, it's almost like, we're dealing with a game that isn't necessarily made for competition, but it's just being pushed in the realm of competition because of, of, of the time we're living in. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like a new fighting game, and the standards that other fighting games have set prior to this is one is reason why I call a game like Dragon Ball Z Fighters um, a scrub mode video game. Now, despite me saying that and everything else I'm going to say in this video, let me just touch on this real quick. If you're playing Dragon Ball Fighters and you're fine, oh, and by the way, I noticed that y'all put a Z at the end of Fighters trying to be a little hip-hop. Y'all not slick. We've been doing that forever. Like, they replaced the S with a Z. Hip-hop been doing that, but that's neither here nor there. Who cares? But, um, but yeah, um... Fighting games had set a standard where it takes a bit of time to learn them more so than any other game. And when you take that element out of it, you end up getting what was called a scrub mode video game. For example, now in the last video that I did, which I'm going to tie this to, I think that I, I mentioned that the first game that I seen that had these scrub, these easy mode, one button mash combos, just that system being in the game, that's disgusting to me. Like, especially for me coming, maybe it's just the time that I grew up in, because that's when fighting games were created. Like, we didn't have that. You had to actually learn a fighting game. Like, you couldn't just get in there and just pick up, like, you know, like, I, I remember a time where if, if you knew any type of special move with a character, you was the you was the man, you was the man. You notice I zipped up my hoodie because we finna get serious. Um, you was the man because they didn't have con like special move lists and all that. And when that came, when they started putting like for me, like I grew up in the arcades, just like a lot of you people who may be watching this, we grew up in the arcades. And eventually, like it got to the point where they started posting like the special moves. For the characters, like on like the outer screen, like on like the outer rim of the screen, you know what I mean. So 
that didn't necessarily hurt fighting games. It actually helped them. And it helped people be more sharper with what they're doing. And they kind of took like the guesswork out of like how you do a certain move. And now you can implement different strategies in there because of that. Now, that's completely different than just dumbing down the game so much to where a person could just do one button push and just, oh, look, a combo. Oh, this goes into that. That's so dumb to me. Like, again, I understand the common sense of business. They're trying to pull in the people who only play games like Candy Crush and games like um, uh, Angry Birds and Temple Run. People who only play mobile games who never thought to play a fighting game in their life. They're targeting for that audience. Because they seen that audience was going towards like the first person shooters. Like, that's the reason why most girls, and I'm going to say it, most girls play fucking first person shooters only because of how easy they are. And they crazy too. They just want to shoot something. So, you know, they be getting mad at y'all dudes so damn much for treating them bad. And You know what? Let me go play zombies real quick. Let me shoot some of these zombies in the head and relieve my stress. You know, so, no, maybe for them, like, it is like a, a good, a, a good, uh, reliever of stress. So, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to, you know, make it out to be anything like that, but, you know, but yeah, like fighting games take a little bit more finesse to them. And if, and if fighting games weren't meant to be like that, then they wouldn't have started making, they would have started with the whole scrub system in, in the 90s. But the first time I seen this, in the last video I said, I started seeing this in, uh, in um, King of Fighters 14. I had to catch myself because I almost said something else. But yeah, uh, I want to say that was the first game, but now that I think about it, the first time I seen that one button mash system was actually in uh, Persona 4 Arena. That was the very first time I, I, I seen that. But then again, you have to look at the game franchise that it comes from. It's like Persona 4, before then, I don't think they had a fighting game. I could be wrong. So somebody please correct me on that. But I don't think they had a fighting game prior to that that set of standard. And like I'm, I'm not even talking about the company that made it. I'm just talking about the the series itself. Like it's always like a like a, like a Japanese RPG. They, they didn't make a fighting game out of that prior to Persona 4 Arena. Again, I could be wrong, but to me that was the first game that I played that had that scrub mode system in it. And because I didn't see any uh, fighting game with Persona 4 characters in it before, like I didn't have any, I didn't have any type of standards for that series being a fighting game. So I was just like, okay, this is just the way they made their fighting game. But when you look at games like Marvel versus Capcom, I mean, we go back to Marvel, we can take this back to, to X-Men versus Street Fighter, you know? Now, X-Men vs. Street Fighter wasn't necessarily the the best game, but it was an interesting concept at first to take two major franchises under Marvel and Capcom and to put them in a crossover game. That was a big deal back then, you know, and you had to be careful with a lot of the things back then that you don't even have to be careful with now in a game like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And this is all going to tie to in Dragon Ball Fighter, so don't get too discouraged that I'm kind of venturing off from that game. I'm actually proving a point here. Um, with many video games, these with many fighting games that's coming out these days, they're putting out, well, especially in recent fighting games that's been released, they put in these easy button, button push combos because they're trying to pull in uh, these other people who I mentioned that's, that's only playing like mobile games and only playing first-person shooters and, th you know, simple games. So they're trying to compete with that. So they figure they have to, you know, dumb it down for those people because they may not be a as savvy with fighting games as, as basically like somebody like myself or somebody else who's been playing fighting games for a number of years as well. And you could just pick up on certain things like fast, like combos, like the game could have just came out. You don't know about the mechanics in the game or nothing like that, but you know that this character plays like, you know, 
a, a certain character from another game. Like, you know, this is going to be like their version of a Shoto character. This is going to be their long range fighter character. This is going to be the character with all the shenanigans. Like, you can just point them out. You don't even know what those characters do, but you're savvy enough and you've been playing fighting, fighting games enough that you can just poke it out and just see, you know, okay, this character does this, this character does that. This character looks like he does this. Let me play him and pick him up and see what, uh, you know, like what I can learn from him. You know what I mean? Like, you could be that savvy. But these new guys, they aren't savvy with the game. So, with fighting games. So, on top of that, some of these people aren't even interested in playing fighting games at all. Speaking of that, I got to touch on the people who did this, this uproar when the original Street Fighter V was released. And they did, like, this big uproar. It was, like, I don't know, some females or some type of feminist group or some nonsense like that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know what group it was, but I think it was like a feminist group. They made a big case about Aramika, you know, um, um, pretty much doing her traditional uh, butt slap um, like when she activates her super. And like the camera angles for like for like Cammy when she does like her entrance and things like that. And they made like this big uproar about it that it was being over sexualized and everything like that. People don't even know the history of these video games and the way the developers. Origin, originally designed these characters to be, you know what I mean, for them to even have an opinion, because a lot of these people don't even, play. a lot of those people, the people that made that big uh, complaint about those camera angles and all that in, in Street Fighter V, in, in the original Street Fighter V, they don't even play Street Fighter V, they don't even play fighting games, period, so how do you, you know what I mean, like, that's just like, you're kidding, and you're bowing down to a... You're bowing down to people who, who don't even financially support your game. So I'm just like, dude, like, it's whatever, though. I mean, at the end of the day, like, it's still Street Fighter, somewhat. Because Street Fighter Five is a flawed system, but let me not venture off too far. Uh, uh, like, the second game after that had to be, like, the King of Fighters 14 that had, like, the one-button mash combos. Because that, right there, and then that's when, that's when I noticed it, really. Like, it, it was in the Persona 4 arena, but it didn't really hit me until, uh, uh, like, the latest King of Fighter game came out, and that's when it threw me for a loop, because King of Fighters was never a one-button push game. I mean, never a one-button push combo system. I mean, you could take it back to Guru, Mark of the Wolves, and Fatal Fury, and all these other games that SNK made that they mixed in together to make King of Fighters. You know what I mean? Samurai Showdown, all that. It was never a one-button push system in any of those games. You had to learn those games. Again, learning. But when they take the guesswork out of, in, in any form, when they take the guesswork out of what you can do with the character to the point where you can just one-button push the shit to the... Dang, I, I can't be saying things like that. YouTube many policies. But when, when, when it gets to that point to where it gets so dumbed down like that, that's when it becomes a scrub mode video game. And Dragon Ball Z Fighters is just another of what I can only assume to be a list of games that are going to be made like that. You know, and it's actually like, for the sake of competition, it's a pretty scary situation because it's like, dang, like how much, exactly how much more are they going to dumb down these video games for people who don't even really play video games like fighting games like that you know like it's a scary situation because you when you play a fighting game and being somebody that plays fighting games for like a long time has been playing fighting games as long as me you want to be challenged you want to know that you're playing something that not everybody can play it's a feeling of you're a part of this elite class of people you know and it's not even an elitist mindset I wouldn't even call it that it's just that you're doing something that not, that not everybody can do you know what I mean and that kind of brings a sense of, you know, basically, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? And it's not like y'all can answer me. I mean, I'm uh, recording a video. This isn't live like I wanted it to be due to, again, circumstances. But what's the word I'm looking for? Pretty much like, it gives you a sense of originality. Knowing that you can do something that not everybody else can do. 
And that's a prideful feeling, knowing that you're doing something that, no, that not everybody else can do. That's why certain fighting game, uh, certain players, certain professional gamers in the FGC, that's the reason why they get the attention that they do. I mean, you look at Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox was whipping people left and right in those Mortal Kombat tournaments. To the point where, where if he entered a tournament, he was the guy to beat. And to this day, Sonic Fox set a standard when it came to Mortal Kombat video games. And just fighting games overall. To where, like, he's the guy to beat. Like, if he enters any type of fighting game tournament, there's almost like this fear, like, oh, man, like, there goes Sonic Fox. I don't know if he's going to win another one. You know what I mean? It's the same effect that Daigo had, um, like, back in the day. It's, it's the same effect that, um, when he had his time, uh, as, like, the premier player, uh, like, Justin Wong. You know what I mean? Like, he, it's certain people that had their, their moments in the sun that just make, uh, fighting games worth watching. You know what I mean? And they just bring a different look to, fi to a fighting game. Like, dang, I didn't even know you can do that in that. You know what I mean? And when they take that out, it's almost like they dwindled that a little bit to make it easily accessible for, like, the Joe, the average Joe who never picked up a fighting game in their life. And it's kind of like a scary situation because you can see the potential in the road that that's going down and it's not a good one. So you got to make videos like this to kind of like, I, I wouldn't say stop well, hoping that it can go back to the competition and not catering to these people who really don't care to learn the game at all. You know what I mean? Death is one of, is, is really what's going to keep a fighting game. Death and competition kind of go together hand in hand because the more you have to learn about a fighting game, the more... Uh, uh, again, like, fighting games shouldn't be so complex to where, you know, people can't just pick it up, but it has to be a learning curve. That's what makes fighting games fighting games. You know, that's what makes fighting games unique. There's a learning curve with the characters, again, what you're going up against, who you're going up against, the way that they're using the character. Like, you, you really gotta, you know, dive deep into fighting games to understand them. But they're taking the guesswork out, and they got a lot of characters that when you put that one button mash combo system in, it's like all of them play the same. They lose their individuality. And Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, <laughs> we're going to talk about this mistake, because it was a mistake. The way they made the game was a mistake. The gym system, the Infinity Stones uh, mechanics was a mistake. They made Reality Stone so, or, so OP. Space Stone was like right behind it. Then you had the the Time Stone after that. The Mind Stone doesn't even get used. Like we ain't even gonna talk about that. The Mind Stone is just there to just take up space. Like you can't combo into the Mind Stone or nothing like that. It's just you just gotta hope that you're good enough with the basics of the game to where you can't have the same tools that the other person has. That's 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 the people that use Mind Stone. I was one of those people that you know. Mind Stone just didn't, you know, it was a it was a gym that I wanted to get good with using. Because <laughs> it's just like characters, like certain characters in fighting games, I feel like the, the less they're used, the more of a breath of a fresh air when somebody goes against them. You know what I mean? And I always wanted to be that person where when you went against me in a fighting game, you know, I'm using a character that nobody else wants to use and I'm good with that character. That means that you're... Again, original. Because originality, you know, again, that's the time I grew up in. You had to be original. You know, but of course you you had tear whores back then as well. Uh, like, to these days, like any Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament you still see around, you know, people still doing the same Magneto, Storm, Sentinel team-ups. Because they understand how broken that stuff is. And, and since it was on PlayStation 2, that ain't getting fixed. Um... At all. At all. And to see what happened with Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and that whole controversy there to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, it's like seeing an easy mode in there. Like they took out assists. They gave every character, you know, these safe tag ins. Because <clears throat> anybody, again, playing from X Men vs. Street Fighter up until now, 
tag-ins in these uh in these Marvel cross-up games, in these Marvel Capcom cross-up games were never safe. Like you had to do it at the right moment in the middle of a combo or something in order for you to not have to risk your character's life. You know what I mean? So show I have to give a shout out to Sandthrax because he was actually right in that video that tagging in Marvel uh, games were never safe. They were never safe. You know. Um, and it's just to see a game like the Marvel vs. Capcom franchise get treated like that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. You know. I, I would say that going back to the two-man sale you know, like the two-man team. Uh, that was an interesting take. The gym system was an interest, interesting take, but they fell on their face hard with this game. You know, you look at a game like King of Fighters 14, it's not even around anymore. <laughs> like, how long ago was that game released? And within, like, a year, they stopped doing tournaments for it. Like, the tournaments for King of Fighters 14 was, was like, dwindling so fast that where now the game was just non-existent. You probably have some people that's just fans of King of Fighters that just won't let the game die and props to them. But overall, the game is dead, you know. And the same thing with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Like, people still play it, but it's like a, it, it's a non-competitive game that people are pushing in, into the competitive scene. You know what I mean? They didn't make that for, the, you know, like the the Marvel players. They didn't make it for the Marvel players. They made it for the, for the simpletons. Uh, that don't play fighting games. And that's the same way I'm looking at Dragon Ball Fighters. It's a game that they have these easy mode system to to the point where it's just like unless you're just looking at it from a fan's perspective and you're not looking at it from the perspective of a fighting game because everybody that didn't gave props to this game they either are looking to make money in the fighting game circuit which I'm not mad at them because that's what they do even when a game is bad, they still overhype it to being like the best thing ever. And they just, because they're making money with the game. They want you to continue to support the game and continue to look at the tournament. So they got to keep saying that, oh, this game is great. This game is so good. And no, it's not. It's flawed. It's flawed than a mofo. Stop lying, man. You know. But yeah, man, it's just one of those things where I'm looking at it and... You know, you're allowed to like the game. I'm not saying you can't and can't like a bad game. It's just that seeing that in a game, I see the way fighting games as a whole are just going down, and it's just like, it's not good. I can only hope that fighting games are gonna, aren't are going to get any scrubbier than that because the next thing that, that's coming to mind is that is that instead of one button pushing, one button mashing your way into a combo just just, just, just by pushing one button, because we can go back to the Budokai series and the Budokai Tenkaichi series. There's been other Dragon Ball Z fighting games, but they weren't necessarily pushed as being competitive back then. Then back then, the, the, the games weren't balanced as well. You had certain characters that were just overpowered, and they, they didn't try to balance it out like they did in Dragon Ball Fighters. You know, if you, again, if you're just looking at it from a fan's perspective, ain't no way Nappa can hang with Cell or Kid Buu or anything like that. But in a competitive fighter, he, he has a chance. You know, Krillin wasn't even around for the Kid Buu fight. He was just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't around for the Kid Buu. He was around for Super Buu. Um, but he wasn't around for the Kid Buu fight. You know what I mean? So he, uh, you know, wouldn't even be able to hold a candlestick. Like, he got stumped out by Cell Jr. You know what I'm saying? Like, let alone Cell himself. Cell was doing a back blast. And he was, you know, in that power struggle with Gohan. Uh <laughs> And he blew away Piccolo, Yamcha, Tien, and Krillin. And it's just like, so by themselves, you know they wouldn't be able to hold a candlestick. But in a competitive fighter, which is what they tried to do, they... But I will say this about the game. Despite me thinking that the game is scrub mode, because that's the reason why I've been hesitant to buy it, because I don't really like supporting games like that. I, I kind of wish I could return... Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite because buying that game was a mistake. Something told me not to buy it, but because I skipped out on Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and I'm glad I did, um, uh, I, uh, man, what was I saying? I got distracted. But, um, but because I missed out on Marvel vs. Capcom 3, I ended up, um,
saying, you know what, I ain't played Marvel vs. Capcom in a while, let me just try it. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, cool. And then I played it, and I was just like, dang, they got me. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. But I will say this, and this is the one positive I have about Dragon Ball Fighters. Despite all that, all, all the negative things you know that people refuse to say about the game, and I do mean refuse because they're just looking at it from a, a, a fan's nostalgia perspective. Like, oh, we got a Dragon Ball Z fighting game. Woo. I will say this. Dragon Ball Fighters is more of a Marvel vs. Capcom game than Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I will say that. They got everything right. Like, you know, they have the, uh, uh, like the character assist attacks. They have, you know, tag-ins. You know, tag in combos, uh, a tag in combo system. They have things that make it more so of a Marvel vs. Capcom game <laughs> than Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now, that's saying something. So, in that aspect, I do appreciate Mar uh, Dragon Ball Fighters because they did something that Marvel vs. Capcom uh, couldn't do. And that was make a game that was actually, you know, good. So, even despite me saying that it's a scrub mode video game. There are some things about it that I like that clearly doesn't have to do with Dragon Ball Z, you know, me being a fan of Dragon Ball Z, so, that's it, man, so, that's my piece, you guys tell me what you think, uh, do you agree that it's a scrub mode video game, and if so, do you still like it, I mean, I'm not knocking you, but I'm, I'm just calling, uh, I'm just pretty much calling a spade a spade, that's it, you know, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's a damn duck, so, that's it, man. Take care. Peace. And, uh, look forward to hearing.